Okay, Kevin and Keith here back from Beat the Casino. Listen, we're uh, continuing our session with um, the uh, seven habits of uh, highly effective Baccarat players. And uh, we've uh, been out for a while. I've been working really hard on the app and, and the uh, manual for the app. So that's why we haven't posted much uh, on the videos. But we're back uh, on track here. And we wanted to pick up with... Uh, you know, uh, the next one, Kevin, I'm going to throw it over you to kick off the next one. Uh, uh, the, the, the third habit, so to speak, that uh, is necessary. Yeah, th this is within the uh, uh, the part of the uh, triangle that we you know, developed at the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called put first things first. Yeah. Put and first that's something first. that you need to do as an individual um, before you go to the casino to play. Right. Absolutely. And, and if you had a, you know, we'll break it down into a couple things here of putting first things first to get kind of organized, to get ready to go play and, you know, to uh, attain your goals. Uh, you know, I'm thinking bankroll is probably the one of the main considerations. What are your Absolutely. thoughts? You know, uh, we you need bankroll and limits and try to understand the stakes that you're comfortable to play with. And Absolutely. I, I, you know, I think that's kind of the, one of the first flaws is everybody just, you know, put a couple dollars aside and, and as you're kind of evolving into this is maybe just put a couple hundred bucks aside, uh, you know, so that you can play for 10 or 25 bucks and, and just get comfortable instead of trying to get to this massive win of, of making all this money right away is learn how to play first and manage just a small bankroll, you know, and, and, and do that first. Uh, I, I mean, would you, I think you would probably, uh, you know, go down that path too as a recommendation for someone. There's no doubt, Keith. I mean, if you don't have a sufficient bankroll to uh, satisfy or to support your objectives, you're gonna you're gonna bust out and you're gonna lose yeah. your money. And you're gonna be hitting yourself in the head saying, "Why did I even go do this when I wasn't there?" Yeah, and I think it is important to segregate it out. In, in other words, it, I, you know, we uh, Kevin, you know, we always hear this. I want to make a hundred dollars a day. I want to make five hundred a day. I want to make a thousand dollars a week. I want to be a professional player. You know, I understand the desire to do that, but first of all, is just get a kind of a segregated bankroll and see if you can build that bankroll and leave the money in it. You know, just just yeah. set it aside, whether it's 500 bucks or a thousand bucks that, you you know, you, you don't need it to to buy your sodas down the road or gasoline or anything like just put it aside as an investment kind of uh, uh, thing that you're trying to do or a business, however you want to approach it. But that's all separate from everything else. And I think, uh, you know, the folks that do that usually fare the best because you don't want to bankrupt the business by overbetting and, and, and all those things. So you just want right. to manage the money that way. So. Absolutely. You know, the next one, um, Kevin, I, I think we talked about is observe others. You know, what, give us some insight into that if you're counseling someone about, uh, you know, yeah, having, you played for, oh, having played Keith, for so long as I have, um, you know, I, yeah. I understand that what I did in the beginning, which is, you know, 30 years ago, was yeah. I had no idea how to uh, understand and interpret what else was going on at the table in addition to just me deciding whether I'd get a bet on play or a banker. Right, I mean, there's right. all sorts of things going on in the casino. There's noise, there's TV, there's, uh, you know, slot machines going off. There's Absolutely. people crowded at a table, you know, depending on where you sit, you may or not feel comfortable with that. Right. But the thing you'll learn over time is you'll learn to observe what other people at the, play, at the table are doing and to also, not that, that should affect your strategy so much as it should, you should help you understand kind of the, uh, the what's going on at, at the moment in other people's minds. Absolutely. You know, that's going to affect a lot about, uh, you know, your comfort level. Of playing. Yeah. If you're comfortable, you're not going to be, you know, you're going to be worried about that and not worried about how to make the right decision to bet on. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. So good stuff. Good advice. You know, of course, then that kind of naturally leads into money management. And of course, we're going to tell everyone to pretty much flat bet. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, you know. I, I, there's, I, I just uh, say it this way. If you, if you can't win, if a player can't win flat betting, okay, which means getting your hit rate, you know, we, we talk all the time about hit rate and how do you get it above 50%, et cetera. If you right. can't do that, okay, you will not win money with the progression. You may win in the moment. You may win in the next three hands. You may win all day. But if right. you use that as your go-to method, you know, some kind of uh, negative progression, a, you are going to eventually bust out of it. 
and you're going to wish that you'd never done it. And right. then, you know, if you don't know what to do, you're going to go repeat it and do it again. Yeah, absolutely. You know? And, and it, you know, it's a good feeling when you're winning with it, <laughs> but it's a terrible feeling when you think you've figured everything out and all of a sudden you bust out of it. Yeah, and especially when you're starting out, you know, if you get into that, what what happens is you start betting when you shouldn't. That, that's usually, and, and you know, the casino does all sorts of stuff like that to get you out of your thinking mode. They're, they're going to get you to bet when you shouldn't, you know. And you said a really profound thing one time uh, about betting, Kevin, uh, and it, it really uh, made an impact on me. And it, it, probably we all knew it. It's just you don't realize it until after you think about it, and you you know kind of have a knack for stating what we should always keep at the forefront. And that that is with betting. You said, well, listen, if I make a mistake and I don't make a bet and and I and I didn't lose that or didn't win it and I lost it, it's going to take two bets to make that up. But if I just if I don't bet it, I only got to make one of them up, you know? So right. if you don't bet it, yes, you didn't win. But if you bet it and lose it, you have to not only win the one bet to make it up and then one bet to get ahead. So that's one cool. bet to get ahead. So, so, you know, if, if learn to flat bet and learn to, to spot your bets and, and, you know, divide your bankroll into something, you know, the main goal shouldn't be to go out and make a lot of money first. You know, the main goal should be just get your hit rate up and play for a level that you're comfortable and learn how to manage your bankroll. So good stuff. I think, uh, of course, you're the master of methodology, Kevin, w would that be the next thing you should probably take a look at? Yeah, before you go to the casino and play Baccarat, you obviously should know not just quote unquote what you're doing. You should have a an array of concepts, ideas, methodology. Some people call them systems, uh, whatever you want to call them. I really don't care. I also call it a toolbox. Okay? Yeah, you know, a, a guy comes to, to your house to fix your drain, you know, or whatever, you know, your plumbing. Uh, he's got a whole toolbox. He's got a truck with more stuff in it. If he goes needs to go get it. Same thing yeah. when you go to the casino. The right. reason we call it the playbook, okay? yeah. the reason the forum is so successful yeah. is because people realize over time, whether through seminars or their own efforts or their own, you know, uh, um, beatings that they have to take, you know, because they don't know more right. than one. They know they got to have an array of tools. That's an right. An array of systems. Yeah. And, and, and here is the playbook. <laughs> the tech. <laughs> The 10 best bets in Bakker are right in this playbook. So you get them at uh, Beat the Casino. It's all, we send this to you, of course. Uh, so you can take it right to the casino and write your uh, information in here and refer to it. And, you know, uh, again, there's a lot more than this, but these are the 10 best bets. And uh, it's, it's hugely popular, by the way. Of course, we have strong side and, uh, you know, some of the most common and least common bets in there and, and really good stuff. And, of course, also, too, Kevin, the methodologies gets into the stuff we have in the app. Uh, we have the, of course, your, uh, you know, uh, kind of flagship uh, approach, which of course was 4D and 5D, and the and the, obviously the variations on that, uh, and then of course the hugely popular V87, which is really kind of a, a go-to system for a lot of players because it's easy to play, it's easy to track, and it's a winner, you know, and it, it, it's uh, it's it's just one of those uh, great ways to play, mm -hmm. you know. I so, agree. yeah, uh, and, and, and again, I think the simplicity of it and, you know, obviously it doesn't win every game, but, you know, if you have the patience to sit down and watch a lot of games and and and, and jump in in your spot and analyze it, you know, whatever's ahead tends to stay ahead. And that's pretty much the uh, the premise of, uh, of V87. Um, we wrote down goals. You know, what does success look like? What, what would you say someone's goals should be? in the first couple months of trying to do this, Kevin, what, what would your uh, recommendation be for them? Well, my recommendation is, is uh, from your own personal experience, from your business life, from the life you've, you know, led up to this point, whatever. I don't care if it has Bach right in it or not, or any other kind of gambling or, you know, uh, whatever. Is but come up with a couple of analogies for yourself of what, uh, how Bach right is going to be just like anything else you've ever done. Yeah. And what I mean by that is, is, you know, if you're driving a car and all of a sudden there's a, you know, a sign over the freeway or whatever, and it says, you know, slow down, traffic ahead. You had a couple right. of options. One is to get off and try to find a different path. One yeah. is to go sit in the traffic. Another one is to turn around and go home. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's just like bike ride. Okay. If the shoe is not, you know, coming at you the way that you are prepared to deal with it 
hey, sometimes just getting up and going home is your absolute best course. Yeah. Do not try to, you know, muscle out muscle the casino or yep. muscle the shoe. That's right. That's just That's one right. again. That's right. And of course, you know, lastly, what we talked about is tracking mechanisms. And <clears throat> pardon me, I know you're a big uh, proponent or a big advocate, I should say, of this. One of them, you you have a, a way to track it. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. Um, in the game, and of course, you use your chips. I, I just watch you. You pretty much flatbed and basically just use your chips. You buy in for ten, uh, for a thousand dollars. If you're if you're up to twelve, you know you're up two. If you're down to eight, you know you lost two. So I know you use your chips, but you have to have one in the game. However, is more comfortable for you, and then one long term of session. Would you say that's probably very important, and obviously one of the first things that you should get first. Yeah, one of the things that, uh, Keith, when I first got on the forum in 2010, right. I realized I didn't have any consistent way to measure, okay, my progress, at what, right. whether I was doing good or bad. Yeah. And I immediately, I think it, uh, in vogue then was a system called NOR, N-O-R, Nuclear Opposite Repeats, okay? Yep. Still valid today if you play it the right way and you know what you're doing. Yep. Uh, but one of the things was you had to track your wins and, you know, uh, your losses and you know, figure out when you should bet, when you shouldn't, and if you know if right. it wasn't working, how do you adjust for it? Whatever. Right. If you don't have a way to uh, track what you're doing and to measure how well you're doing against yeah. your goals and expectations, you're going to be right. floundering, and you're yeah. going to you're going to make stupid bets. You're going to over bet. Yeah, you're, that's you're, right. You know, that's right. And, and 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 that's one of the most things. I mean, you know, every great athlete or everybody who's ever broken a record. They have to get feedback on, well, where am I at right now? You know, and if That's you're right. just, you know, you, you have to be organized. I mean, th this is, <clears throat> I don't want to say, it, well, it is hard. This is hard to do. It's it's not an easy thing to do, but it's possible if you use, <clears throat> pardon me, the right approach and and you, you actually track what you're doing and you get feedback not only from yourself and from your own play, but from others. And, and you know, again, you want to coalesce all this information into uh, you know, a win and, 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 and you do this by feedback from others and tracking and everything else that, uh, you know, we teach you how to do. So well, you, listen, you, go you, ahead. you, you, you got to be able to measure yourself, not just in the moment of this right. particular, you know, two year plan or session or whatever, right. but when you're done, you got to take that information and go back to all your accumulated information that you have so far with respect to the game. Yeah, I don't care if it's broke down, you know, weekly, monthly, from the beginning, whatever. And you've got to now put these new, you know, uh, uh, statistics, whatever you want to call them, in there. And you've got to see, are you making progress going forward? Or are you yeah. regressing? Yeah. In other words, right. that tell you you're probably doing something wrong or not doing something. You're not maximizing the tools and stuff that are available to you. That's and right. It's, it's an eye-opener. You know, people are yeah. doing well, and all of a sudden they look and they say, geez. You know, I've lost three out of the last four sessions, and I didn't do so well today. You know, but I forgot that I had lost those other three. You know, right, um, right, and, yeah. and and that's part of the casinos game. You know, it's like, well, you know, they, they get you. You know, it's everything is quick and now, and you forget what time it is, and you know, keep records of how you do, and you know, uh, the folks who are most successful as yourself, and right. I know some other folks who are just you know, document, document, document when they play, they take it very seriously. They're not going to the casino to, I, you know, some people have fun there, of course, but that isn't their primary reason. They're going to make money. I know you're dead serious when you sit down and play. It's like all the idle chatter stops. There's, there's, there's nothing that you're concentrating on more than the game at hand. Sure. After, you know, afterwards we go to eat and have a great time and, and everything, but Man, it's game one when you sit down at the table, and everyone needs to 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 be that way. And uh, and uh, you know, it, it's a great advice, and it's one that a lot of folks uh, kind of get stray away from. So, uh, game one when you're sitting at the table. So, anyway, well, listen, that, that's our uh, that, that's our our next one here. Uh, stay tuned. We're going to finish this seven habits of uh, highly effective baccarat players. And uh, Kevin, thanks for uh, chiming in today. Okay, you got it. Bye bye.